Right, so this is the Hornady custom die set that I got for the 300 win. And I just want to show you a couple of reasons why I really like these dies. One is the expandable on the die. Get it to focus. It is very nice and smooth. It is removable, so you can replace these pins if one breaks. But having this really nice smooth, a lot of them have a little bit of a step and then a knurled part. And I find sometimes you can yeah, get a little bit of stress on them, whereas I like that. And moving to the seating die, you have a few components. So these all sit like that. So this will guide the bullet up into here, keeping everything nice and straight. And you can buy custom ones of these if you're using a VLD with a very large long tapered tip. You can actually get, in, can get these bushings to match uh, certain rounds. So uh, for the LDX for example, I can buy an ELDX uh, bushing. So the taper inside here will actually exactly match the taper of the projectile and everything is as true as you can get it. So there's a couple of little things why I like that product. Right, so this is a fired case and that is the length of the fired case. And we'll be going through fired and then our dies are set up how it says to in the book. And then I'm gonna fully resize this fired case. Um, <coughs> I won't really do it on camera because it's a bit hard to go from between the two and get everything in a good shot, but I'll just you know, flick between the two. Uh, and I wanna show you the difference and then I'm gonna show you how to headspace the belt and the shoulder and then why we do this whole process. Right, I'm just gonna show you this part and I'm gonna show you the products I use. So I use a graphite die, in the Imperial sizing wax, and I'll show you how I apply each. Right, so the graphite die, you just dunk the case in it, a little bit on, tap it. I'm not using the um, applicator media, the applicator is better, but they were out of stock when I got this, so we'll just stick with that. Now you can see you only put it on the case neck, and I'll do the case neck inside of the case mouth, and then you just take a smidge of this, and you just apply it at the base there. That's our moment product. I'm sure you've all seen this. <laughs> now I'm not going to prime this case on the way on the way down, but you get the idea. and one full size. Right, so that's the size after a full resize in a factory die set. So you can see the difference between the two. And now I'm gonna set the gun up and show you guys how to do a, that's gonna be lengthy as part of this video, how to shoulder and belt headspace. All right, for this part, I've taken the expandable out. And if we get this to focus, you can see where the neck's coming down and how close you are. So you can get yourself pretty much set up without having the expandable uh, making life just that little bit harder for you. But yeah, you can see as it's coming down, just before you get to the shoulder, that's when you, I'll show you the next part. Right, so this part of it requires the bolt to be completely disassembled. You want no firing pin, you want no extractor claw, you want no ejector. You just want smooth contact with your case. So we've gone from taking the expandable and everything out of here, stripped the bolt, got the action ready. We've got a rod coming through to knock the case out once you're done. And I'll put it all back together. I'll put the bolt in and put the case in and show you what you're looking for. So, 
chuck that back in there make sure uh, it's right out of the way and bolt handle doesn't drop you can force eh, I don't even think you can force it alright so pop that out put it back in here um, and what we'll do is we'll mark our press and we will mark dies we can just get a rough idea of how much we're taking at a time so we don't confuse them. See how that'll mark, we'll move it just a fraction more. Yep, it's very, very close. Sorry this is taking so long, but you guys get the idea of what's involved and how precise you need to be. That's closes obviously, but still has a bit of tension. So she is very, very close. So we'll take a measurement at this. Let's see if I can do this on camera. Take it out of the way so it doesn't get chin. Alright, see if I can. This is going to be a pain to do on camera, but I'll try my best to do this on camera for you. Right, on. Zero. It's close enough. Right, so that's back to being bang on on your fired case measurement. So what we're going to do is get it, oops, moved it, um, maybe half a thou. So if we can take that, if we can make it 272 even, then that would be absolutely spot on. So we'll see if we can have enough fine movement in our dies.
Right, we'll measure that, see how we get on. Right, I don't know if you can see that, we've taken that half thou. Oops, sorry, keep moving it. Bloody hard to do on camera. It's actually, probably doing a full thou, so that's pretty much bang on where I want it. Once we lock everything up and do a um, put the expandable back in, there'll be a few. In every case, is going to be different. So yeah, but that's a, pretty much how we do it. And the reason for that is obviously if you're You've got a fired size, and every time you size it, it bumps the shoulder 10, whatever thou. Every time you fire it, it moves out. Every time you bump it, it moves back. So you want to keep it the same, no stretch throughout the case. And that just extends your case life, I mean, to a point in my 338 mag, I am up to anywhere from 12 to 15 firings per case and a lot of people reckon they can't even get six depending on their obviously depending on their load but the cases that I've been using that have done that many firings in my load development cases and all my normal cases just you know keep getting used in load development and my poor cases are the ones that I use you know my general use so yeah that's an uh, overview of how I set my dies up, and yeah, 